tonight. Um, hopefully you guys will enjoy the story. A lot of you already know most of it. Um, I didn't think I was going to have to hold the mic, so it's going to be kind of awkward, but I'm sure I'll rally. Um, <laughs> in the last two months of preparing for this tribute to Mom's life, a narrative of thoughts and memories of her life and her contribution to this world have continued to be ever present. Who she was as a woman, wife, mother, grandmother, sister, friend, and Christ follower. You see, Anita was a survivor. A survivor throughout, throughout her whole life. That's why I know and believe God has a wonderful purpose for each and every one of us. And God certainly gave mom. As you know, mom always was a woman who loved people, always had a smile, and certainly a big hug for everyone she ever met. She loved to party, Christian music and rock and roll, loved the casinos and the slot machines, and she loved to ring in the new year way past the hours of midnight. Mom always looked, dressed, and acted like a lady. She loved her white Russian cocktail. And Mom even loved Sunday and Monday night football as long as she knew what team I was rooting for. She watched intensely. She loved to clean, and clean she did. Every place we ever lived was far cleaner after we lived there than before. She loved God, and Jesus was her Savior. She had a tenacity, focus, and determination about her that showed through in everything she wanted and needed in life. Some of you spent enough time talking with her to understand as though what an incredible journey Mom had to be living the 84 years that she did. Whether it was surviving the odds of birth, Hitler's Nazi Germany, World War II, homelessness, hunger, or sadness, she found a way to make life work and worked life with passion and fortitude. She was a perfect example of how God shapes us according to his vision, even though we don't know what that is. For it was her journey through life and how she lived it, dealt with it, and grew through it that became our gift of knowing her. It was her compassion, gratitude, and humility that made you feel special. It was her acceptance of things she couldn't change and change the things she could and having faith that everything was going to work out no matter what. So tonight, I'd like to share and tribute her strength, perseverance, faith, and hope of what made Anita so special to us all. It was against all odds this baby girl born December 10th 1929 in Mannheim, Germany, would ever survive and live a normal life. Yes, she lived 84 years, but it wasn't necessarily easy or normal. It was a time period ending the Roaring Twenties and the beginning of the Great Depression. Economically, throughout the world, life was falling apart. Crash, the, upon the crash in the United States, the impact on Germany was dire. Millions were thrown out of work and banks collapsed. And with all the uncertainty of where the world was heading, a little premature one and a half pound baby girl, Anita Hartman, was born. Unexpected to live, she wasn't given a middle name, told she would not fully develop, walk, talk, or grow into adulthood. After almost one year in an incubator weighing a whopping nine pounds, Little Anita went home. Her struggles through her life, through her younger years, continued. Then came World War II, another challenge. Now only 12 years old, she experienced the air raids and bombing throughout her hometown. She was separated from family, working in homes for food and shelter just to stay alive, giving months, going months at a time, not hearing or seeing her family. Her parents were bombed out of their homes twice before the war ended. The bonds and function of family was a very thin strand. However, mom kept persevering. 
1945, World War II was over. However, life was not much easier. For the next several years, Europe would still suffer with unemployment and turmoil in the economy. Mom trying to find work and shelter was a day-by-day -day struggle, a typical day of walking the streets until she could stand in lines at shelters in the hopes of not having to sleep on the streets. Then, one fateful evening in 1949, at 19 years old, a friend invited her to join her to meet up with some GIs at one of the USO clubs. Well, that night changed her life forever. She met Army Sergeant Robert Williams, 16 years her senior. They obviously hit it off in spite of the fact Mom didn't speak English and Robert didn't speak German. They partied, laughed, and figured out how to communicate between two different languages. Some things never change because today, men and women are still communicating in two different languages. <laughs> <laughs> At the time she met my father, the Army had a moratorium on soldiers marrying German citizens, but that didn't stop him. Determined to marry the woman he loved, my father proceeded to go through two and a half years of sworn affidavits, paperwork, and blood tests to get permission to marry her. Finally, in 1952, my father was granted permission to marry Anita Hartman and then received orders to return back to America. So he took his wife and baby girl home. Coming to America was only the beginning of another journey and challenge. She now had a new husband, a baby girl, and moving to a new home, a new country, and a new world, the United States of America. Shortly after we arrived, my father was called to duty in Korea. He would be gone for 16 months, so mom and I were separated by the only link we had to this new life in America. Neither one of us spoke English, so all we had was each other for emotional and physical support. Communication with the outside world was limited. We learned to speak English while watching TV day and night until the broadcasting network turned off at midnight. Yes, I know. None of you can imagine not having TV 24 hours a day. There was no CNN, Fox News, or ESPN Sports. I am convinced you guys out there would have never made it. <laughs> After returning from Korea War in 1954, my father decided to leave the Army and take his bride and daughter to California where his brother lived in L.A. Again, life would be filled with much adventure and challenge. It was quite common for my mother, I mean for my father to come home and tell my mother to pack up everything she needed in the car because we were moving. It happened so much that it became, became the norm. She could organize, pack, and get ready in a moment's notice, and that she did. We moved approximately 18 times from 1954 to 1965, from California to Colorado, and arriving in Tennessee, my father's home state, in 1965. In addition to the moves during that period, my family grew from one child to five, each move was a bit more challenging than the last. However, she never questioned. She just followed because to her, life was always better than where she had been, and if by chance it wasn't, she would make it so. I got a lot of experience during those years helping my mother organize, pack, and get ready to move. She and I continued to grow close while helping with the children since my father typically worked nights. In 1975, Anita had a dream come true. She became a United States citizen. It meant everything to her to truly be a part of a world, a country that she never could imagine possible. In 1983, my parents came to visit me, my brothers and baby sister in California. They had such a wonderful time, so much so, that they sold their property in Tennessee and moved back to California in 1984. In 1985, at 56 years old, Mom enrolled in a driver's education class, took her test, passed, and got her driver's license. 
She was forced to do so because my father had cardiac arrest during a procedure and wasn't expected to pull out. So again, mom rose to the occasion. She got her first and only car, a Honda Civic. She drove it, loved it, and after 35 years of my father driving her, she now is returning the favor. In 1993, my marriage was ending, and more than ever, I needed my parents. I will never forget picking up the phone, crying and feeling so lost. At a moment's notice again, Mom and Dad would get in her little Honda and drive from Riverside to Newport Beach to stay with me for days at a time. They were there for me in a time that was challenging and difficult. During that time, my dad's health was failing, and in 1994, after 45 years of being together, my father passed away. She lost her soulmate, her one and only love. For the first time in my life, I wasn't emotionally capable of being there for my mom, so my wonderful sister Viola wanted and stepped in to have mom live with her in Houston. And so from 1994 to 2002, mom lived in Houston for another new chapter in her life. Even though mom had health issues prior to this, her health was starting to become more and more of a challenge. Even with rheumatoid arthritis and other medical concerns, she was always optimistic about life on a daily basis. In 2002, Mom came to visit me in the desert. She was very ill, but insisted on coming to California. She had emergency surgery, and due to various circumstances, she moved in with me. So now, this is where you all come in. Every one of you know wherever I went, Mom went. Throughout the years, she had ongoing health issues, yet she was always a trooper. In and out of hospitals, doctor's offices, and surgeries, she endured it through it all, tough and positive. It was very rare for her not to rally, even, enough, even though she may not have felt like doing so. In 2010, Mom moved back to Houston to live with my sister, Viola. Mom loved living with her. She had a good life, but the years of continual health issues became more con constant. She continued to visit me, but in December 2012 was her last visit in California. She got double pneumonia in January 2013 and had a rough two and a half months of getting through it. I'm not sure she ever did. At the end of October 2013, she had another complication, and as tough as she was, she was tired, and her spirit was ready to go. In spite of her failing health, while in Willowbrook Methodist Hospital, in her grand and gracious way, continued to nurture and show love and affection for people, but more importantly, she wanted to make sure that everyone knew Jesus. Every doctor, nurse, technician, or aide that interacted with her, she always asked the same question, do you know Jesus? It was important to her. It was so sweet to see her happy while lying in the hospital bed saying, Mary, these people are so good. Everyone I asked if they knew Jesus, they said they did. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, came in and politely asked if he could listen to her heart. As he leaned over with his stethoscope, she looked at him intently and said, Doctor, do you know Jesus? <laughs> and his reply was classic. He politely answered, Yes, ma'am, I'm Methodist. <laughs>
And she'd give us all the cool things that we thought that was good. I mean, she, she really did. I look back and I go, huh? Do it. Obviously, Christ helped do that. Christmas was a very special time for her. And she was very into Christmas. She loved it. And again, somehow she got us what we wanted or what we needed. I remember going to Kmart or one of those stores that she would be laying away stuff. And you know, I just thought, okay, well, wow, great. You know, we're getting what we want. But you know, what I found out was through the church that gave her that stuff. I really didn't realize that until probably 18 years ago, or 18 years of your life, that, you know, we didn't have any of it. It was through the church. But you know what? She preferred it. She did that. She went out and got that. She went out and did that for us. Thanksgiving, we were always had turkey. We always had whatever we needed for food. I remember one time we went to Knoxville at Mary's house for Thanksgiving. And it was awesome. I mean, we, we, we had a great time. Those little things had a great time. And giving thanks, she always made us give thanks. You know, so that was just that was mom. And you know that. Vacations, we couldn't afford vacations. We couldn't go to Disneyland. We couldn't go anywhere. But our vacations were with family. It was with us. It was with, it was when we went. It was with mom and dad. It could have been just a weekend trip or day because mom and dad had, and dad had to work. But, you know, it was with the family. Except for Mary, we really, she was too young. I think she wasn't born at the time. We went, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we did. And, and I think what we got out of that whole thing is during the summer, because we couldn't go out, we found things out about each other, about Dorothy, about Bob, about Will, about myself. We did things on our own. We're able to do that. You know, so I really do appreciate what she did for us there. She was there for us. And that's the key thing. She wasn't working. She was there for us. I mentioned punishment a few minutes ago. You know, she did punish us. She always gave us a cold shoulder. She always looked at us. Made us feel guilty. Of things. <laughs> she didn't she did spank us by that. that we probably deserved it. I remember running around hiding underneath beds and trying to catch, say, catch me. You know, I mean, I used to do that, you know. But, you know, we deserved it. But she would give us those little grins that you can see right there, you know. So she was awesome. And finally, church. Like I said, you know, she was at the cross of 66, and I think that, you know, as teenagers, we kind of just blow it away. But what she did is she made us attend Sunday school. She made us attend Sundays to church every week. And we'd go to Sunday school. And I think when we weren't in Sunday school, she'd probably just have a ball at church just by herself. Her dad really went, but you know, mom was there. She found a way for us to get to church. And I just remember going to Sunday school and we would come out and go to the main service and she would make sure we paid attention. She would make sure we stood when we sang. And she made sure we listened to the sermon because I remember getting a pinch a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's when I accepted Christ. Is, is, is at church with her. You know, and did I know it? I think I did. And I, and I still did not definitely know it. I remember going. And I remember going to vacation Bible study. That's probably because she wanted to get rid of us at some time. <laughs> you know, but, you know, she made us do that. And that's what it was all about, is her family dedication to us. Making sure we had a path as we grew up. And, you know, giving money. You know, she didn't have anything. You know, she pulled out a dollar and we would give it to Christ. And, you know, that is what I learned from my mom. The family, the dedication, the love. You know, and you all have seen that. And so I just, I just wanted to share that with you because that meant a lot to me. You know, I, I hope I made her expectations for myself. You know, I have two wonderful kids. I hope they're going to accept for my mom. But you know, um, she's in a better place. She's with dad right now. I love that. I wish you watching each and every one of us. And uh, I just want to say, does anybody know what three paper words are? <laughs> I love you.
she's said that to me so many times, and I know she's probably said that to you guys, and she was, she was walking out the door. She would say, I love you. I got to the point where I would, when I was a teenager, I'd hang up the phone and say, I love you, and tell you when I say it. <laughs> she would say that all the time. That was her favorite word, I love you. And I could think that she would say that to each and every one of you if she would go out the door. So I really do appreciate the time. I appreciate everybody here that you have done, that you're here for her. And thank you. God bless you guys. Und was ich noch so fair, für mich war sie wie ein leuchtender Stern. Ohne sie ist es dunkel und leer. Sie fährt uns her. Wenn ich du, so den Stern in der Nacht, sehe ich eine Stern der Prinzessin. Vielleicht ist ein neuer Stern geboren, sicher, denn die Welt hat eine Tür. And that means, for that she was here in this world, was a ray of light that's now gone for her. And although she was far away from me, she seemed like a bright star. Without her, everything is dark and empty. We miss her very much. When I looked at the stars in the night, I could see the star, but the wind ever so faintly. Maybe it's a new star that is born, probably so, since the world has lost. Thank you. was not easy for her, but life with her was. 
Whatever her surroundings or struggles, she was a lady. We have a special little thing between us, and I miss her. So with that, um, I want to play a little video. And when we do that, my brother Will is going to come up and um, lead us in a closing prayer. But then I want everyone, when we close with prayer, to grab a balloon. They do come apart. And we're going to go out on the patio and put the balloons out to heaven's tomorrow. And that will be it.